Flicko. Someone says, Kenny, how does your live bass have so much sub? I'll show you exactly what my current bass chain is. Because I have a bass chain right now. I've been editing a bunch and I really like where it's at. Um, here's the bass. Okay. I really think, I think that bass sounds really good. I gotta be honest. I really like that a lot. So here's my chain. Um, Pro Q3. If you go to the bass guitar Brighton preset, it doesn't look exactly like this. I'll, sh I'll show you. If, you. if you go to the preset that I started with, there's the preset. There's where mine is. <laughs> so this might just work for my bass specifically. But the reason I like starting with some of these presets is because they're dynamic presets. They kind of evolve with the sound as it moves. So I'll start with sometimes even these drum presets because they have them for all different drum mics. Your snare top mic, your snare bottom mic, overhead presets, kick presets for your kick mic, hi-hat mic presets, drum bus preset. So I'll start with one of those and I'll kind of just edit for my drums and it usually does a pretty good job. But here is what my EQ looks like, and I'm but I'm starting with that. Remember, I'm starting with that dynamic Brighton preset and then I'm editing it a little bit and taking a lot of highs out and bringing some of those peaks down. Then I'm using Pro C as my compressor and I think this is just a preset. I think I'm going to attack enhancer. DI attack enhancer on Pro C. So all Fab Filter so far. Fab Filter Pro Q3, then Fab Filter Pro C is my compressor. Don't get hung up on that if you don't have that and you're like, Fuck, I want to copy this chain. It sounds good, but I don't have that compressor. I gotta go buy a plug-in. You just need some compression right there. I think the EQ part is probably even more important. You just need some kind of compression right there. You could use a lot of other ones. I would use Wolf Compressor or SSL Comp or like a bunch of other things just as fast as I would use this. But then right after that, R Bass is part of the sauce. I'm using R Bass very low in this beat. But if you listen to it, you can add as much sub as you want. So I'm adding. That's around 69 hertz. That's what I'm adding. I'm starting with this live bass love preset. And you can see there's an asterisk next to it, which means I've edited the preset. But I was using it around here. Just to give me a little extra bottom. But you can add a lot more if you want. You know, as much as you need. And then there's a lot of really good presets in our bass too. But that definitely adds. Like, if you listen to it without it. Now let's do it with it. Just gives a whole different bottom end to it. So it's a, it's a bottom end that you can't create with a real bass. You know what I mean? It gives you lower frequencies and a real bass can really ring off, especially a bass like the one I'm using. Because I'm using a 1969 uh, Fender bass, which is definitely not going to have the sub. That some newer basses might have if you have active pickups and it's a five string, it might sound like a fucking 808 or something if you EQ it the right way, but this shit helps a lot, especially if you're doing like a vintage bass kind of tone and you want that kind of like woody kind of finger noise kind of thing going on where it sounds like you can hear the bass line, but you still want it to punch. This is the key for me. And then mid side, um, starting with the tight bass preset and then taking the stereo width to zero. Don't have to do this. This is stylistic. I'm making something that sounds real old and kind of muddy. It's all good for the bass to be straight in the middle. For a lot of stuff I do that's like vintage feeling or sounding or whatever, feels 70s, feels 60s, I'll keep my bass dead mono in the middle a lot. I just like how it sounds. It makes everything else really easy to pan and figure out for me whenever my bass and my drums, I don't really have to worry about too much. Um, but yeah. That's the whole chain. That's the chain for my bass right now that I've been using. Now, the idea is EQ, compression, a little bit of that sub addition, and then some mid-side. 